The Coindesk Spotlight is brought to you by Nexo, the place to earn on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and more. Crypto investment firm Framework Ventures recently reached over $1 billion in total assets under management after securing $400 million for its third venture capital fund. Joining us now to discuss is Framework Ventures co-founder Vance Spencer. Welcome, Vance. Thanks for having me. Good morning. So, good morning. So, Vance, if I understand correctly, a big part of your business is blockchain gaming. Um, and I would just love to sort of dig into that with you. Blockchain gaming has been a hot topic for a while. Um, what's, what, what, in your view, are sort of the hottest trends right now at the moment? What are you seeing in, in, in that industry that you find particularly exciting? Yeah, I mean, you know, blockchain and, and, and blockchain gaming is the biggest product market fit within crypto today. There's about 3 billion people who play games globally. There's 1.5 billion people who have an internet connection that earn less than $5 a day. And, and the high-level thesis is that these people are going to play, play to earn games because they have, frankly, better financial incentives to do so. On the tail end of that, we also see developers moving from free-to-play to play to earn because, frankly, free-to-play is, is picked over and there's just not a whole lot of opportunity there. So we're seeing a confluence of both developers and the emerging markets in the world that are coming together towards play to earn. And it's just hugely exciting. And it'll be nine or 12 months before we see the first games launch. But you know, we want to get ahead of it. And that's why we've carved off so much of our fun to invest. So also, my understanding is that you're very involved in the intersection between blockchain gaming and DeFi specifically. Can you talk a little bit about that, about why DeFi is needed for blockchain gaming and what benefits it brings? Yeah, I mean, basically all blockchain use cases are decentralized finance. And a lot of these, you know, consumer apps and blockchain games that you see are, are really the financialization of, of the existing Web2 primitives. And so for us, DeFi is effectively the infrastructure layer that's powering all of these games. And DeFi will change and morph as these games take hold and, and onboard billions of people into the space. But DeFi will always be a core primitive that enables the, the core functionality of the game. So Vance, uh from the from the user's point of view, what is the advantage or experience at, at least? What is the advantage of using blockchain gaming versus uh, traditional formats? Uh, you know, is there something better that it's providing, or is it actually worse? But it has some little doodads that um, might make it more enticing. But from, what's the experience compared one to the other? I mean, why why would somebody use blockchain gaming? The biggest part is that there's just better economics. We've gone from you know paying fifty dollars for a disc to play a game to free to play games, which cost you know nothing for the user. And now the logical extension is moving to the other end of the economic spectrum, where people are actually earning money and and you know have items of value as they play a game. And so you know that's one of the primary benefits. The other benefit is is just effectively that these games have open economies. When you play Halo or you play you know pick your video game, there is no notion of the economy of that game expanding or contracting. When you play Axie, you know, you can have the NFTs get more valuable. You can have SLP become more valuable, onboard more people in the game, and the game can become quite large. And you know, vice versa when when the market goes down. And so there's just a fundamental new form factor for building these games with these open economies. And you know, it won't look and feel like the web two games that have come before, but it's just an entirely new experience where you know finance and property ownership and, and self-sovereignty is embedded directly into the game. And there's a huge market for that. But it, there might be some market for it, but if the experience is not fun or if it's not as much fun or creative and the like, I mean, what what gives us the idea that this is what's going to overtake Web 2 when it comes to gaming? Uh, you know, if I'm a user, if I'm a player, I might find it. I, I, why would I care? I'll, I'll spend the extra money, play a game that I enjoy rather than kind of a mediocre game where there might be some in financial incentive for me to do it, but it's a waste of my time. I think the idea that blockchain games will never be up to the caliber of Web2 is is pretty, you know, not likely. You know, games have never been faster, easier, cheaper to build. You know, there's more developers building in Web3 than I think, you know, almost any other industry in the world. And and there's, there's so many shots on goal coming from these blockchain game developers. There's so much venture money chasing it that you have to assume that these games are going to get up to Web2 parity at some point. Um, and so the games will be at some point, you know, as fun and as enjoyable as the existing uh, Web2 games to play. It'll just take a couple of years. And then it just comes down to what are the superpowers that are in this game that are uniquely enabled by blockchain? And I think the core premise is that the better economics and the communal ownership of these games will attract, you know, frankly, more people because the game is communally owned. 
than the Web2 corollaries. Can you talk a little bit about the geographical distribution of blockchain gaming fans and users? So, you know, we saw with like Axie Infinity, you know, the Philippines has been a real hotspot for blockchain gaming. I'm just curious what you've seen in your observation. Are there any other countries that maybe people are less aware of that are like really active in this space or, or where are you looking at geographically? The two big markets for <clears throat> for games that we see, you know, today are Southeast Asia and then Latin America. And and Latin America is is you know has less penetration than Southeast Asia, but it has roughly the same demographics and and socioeconomic status as, as Southeast Asia. And so we think that the play to earn games will be compelling to them. Um, but you know, just like free to play, it wasn't the people who were buying the disc games who went off and played Candy Crush or who went off and played Boom Beach when it came available on a mobile phone. And it's just an entirely new cohort of people that are going to be playing these games as well. And so we look for the emerging markets to kind of be first to these games and to bootstrap a lot of the playership, a lot of the you know, notoriety and the IP. Um, and then we'll see the, developing, the developed world you know, on board as well. So it's going to be, you know, again, a lot different market than we see traditionally playing games, but that's not necessarily a bad thing.